Let me tell you a story, all right? I'm going to tell you a story about a farmer. This farmer had a chicken farm, a guy in Meadow, where he raised chickens. And the chickens, of course, laid eggs, and then he would sell chickens for market and the like. And as he went about his farm, he, he, took, uh, he would look around, and he noticed that there was a nest, a needle of an eagle, a mother eagle, an aigla. And then he went over to where this nest was, and he noticed that this egg was about to actually break. Hatch. Good. Hatch. <laughs> we'll, we'll accept that. And then it did hatch. And then a baby eagle. Now remember, eagles are monstrous animals. But the baby eagle was not. So he was very interested. And he would keep going to the nest. He kept going to the nest. And as he went to the nest, he saw that the, after two or three days, the mother eagle had lived. There was no way that that little aguilita, that baby aguila, was going to survive without a mother. So what he did is he takes the aguilita, the baby eagle, and he takes it to his gallinero and puts it in with a chicken. With a chicken. After all, all birds and fowl and all of those kind of animals eat the same. In other words, eagles and birds eat the same thing as gallinas do. And so the little eagle, in effect, started developing, growing, and everything else became a big eagle, because they're big animals. But it stayed with the chickens, and it behaved like a gallina. And it grew up, and it behaved like a gallina. It never grew anything like that. So then, one day, a, a, a biology teacher came to the farm, and he noticed there in the gallinero, he noticed that there was this eagle. I mean, it was a monstrous eagle. And he says to the farmer, hey, that's an eagle. He says, yes. Well, you know, eagles are made to fly. They're supposed to soar through the sky. And then the farmer says, not this one. You see, this little eagle lost its mother. The mother never came back. And I brought it to the chicken farm and put it in with the chickens. And it behaved just like chickens. And, and the, the teacher said, no, 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 no. Eagles can't do that because eagles were born to fly. They're supposed to soar through the sky. He said, let me show you. So the farmer was just looking. He was just looking. So he takes the eagle and grabs it in his hand, throws it up. And then the eagle wraps its wings once, gets to the ground, and runs back to the chicken. See? Said the farmer, I told you. You know, I told you. And then the teacher said, no, 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 no. Eagles are made to fly. They're supposed to soar through the sky. He said, not this one. He said, let me show you. So he goes up to the very apex, the very top of the, of the barn. And then the farmer was just looking. And he asked him, because I said, it's the son so So he goes all the way to the very top of the, of the, of the, of the, of the barn. He takes the eagle with him. And this time, he takes the eagle, throws it out. And it's coming down from the barn, flaps his wings once, flaps his wings twice, goes to the ground. Back to the chick, to the guy in Back to the chickens. You see, said the teacher. It said the farmer to the teacher. I told you he couldn't fly. And no, no, no. Eagles are made to fly. They're supposed to soar through the sky. I mean, that's what eagles are. He said, "Let me show you." He said, "Well, I hope you're not going to do this." So then the, the 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 biology teacher takes the eagle and he goes to very, very deep ravine where you could nearly, barely see the very bottom of it. And the farmer kept saying, certainly you're not going to do that. Certainly you're not going to do that. He said, watch this. So then the farmer, rather the biology teacher, takes the eagle, throws it down. The eagle starts falling. Started flapping its wings. Flapping its wings. Flapping its wings. Kept flapping its wings. Started flying. Started flying. And that eagle, then go past the gallineros, past where he had been raised with the chickens. And he would look down, but he never, never became a chicken again. Because he discovered he was an eagle. You know what the moral to that story is? The moral to that story is that everybody in this room is born an eagle. And sometimes, sometimes people around us and sometimes we ourselves make our thing, ourselves think that we're gallinas. 
and we're chickens. And nobody, nobody is born a gallina. Everybody is born an eagle. Everybody is born an eagle. And everybody up here can do what anybody else can do. You'll need dozens of stories that could be told to you by people that I know. Ask your teachers sometimes to tell you people that they know. But you see, I'm a little older than most of the people that are here. And I told you what my name was, right? But I know this person that I'm going to tell you of very, very well. And he was born in the valley. And he was born in a family of nine. His mother did not know English. She had come from Mexico. She did not know English. And he was the number eight child of nine. He had five brothers. And at one time, all six brothers slept in the same bed because things were pretty hard in those days. And then when you were born, he, you know, his last name was sounded funny when you pronounced it in English. When you had that kind of last name, you weren't supposed to finish junior high, which is now middle school, much less high school. And so this person, one time, when he was about 11, 12, 13 years old, went to see some people, some people speak at a political thing, you know, where people talk and how politicians are. And there was this doctor and this lawyer that spoke there. And he was young, his father took him there. And he liked what this attorney said and the way this attorney spoke. And then and there, he decided he wanted to be an attorney. And everybody around him would say, there's no way. After all, you know, you're not even supposed to finish junior high. He wanted to be an attorney. He, he, he had this, this, this idea, this dream, that he wanted to be an attorney. And they've been doing pretty well, because, you know, he, said he was an eagle. Didn't think he was an eagle. And then, never having lost sight of that, he went on to high school. And in high school, he had a good time. Forgot he was an eagle. He had such a good time that he went to high school an extra year, and there was a teacher that once came to say to him, you're never going to amount to anything. Never lost sight of a dream that he wanted to be an attorney. Never did that. And although he went to high school the next year, he still wanted to go to college because he wanted to be an attorney. And teachers and everybody around him, and he himself sometimes gave up on the proposition. But it's high school. You know, even though it went another year, because, you know, up here, all of us are eagles, contrary to what everybody thinks. And I got to tell you a, a secret that's very well kept. And when it comes to college, you know, the biggest secret that never told is that all you have to do to finish college is know how to read, you know how to do that right. You know how to write, you know how to add, you know how to subtract, that's all you need to do to finish college. Am I wrong? That's all you need to do to finish college. So he goes to college, and he had to go to the local college because remember that he was number eight out of nine and all of his brothers had gone to this junior college, which was local. And they didn't have any money to go anyplace else. So he finished his two years. Then he went to the University of Texas. And he, he was going to drop a class because of the fact that you had to, to go to school, to college so many years before you went to the law school. He had already done all of the coursework. Oh, incidentally, this fellow that went to high school the next two years, he's through college. The one that the teacher said, couldn't do it, he's through college. Why? Because he could write, he could read, he could add, he could subtract. You don't need to do anything else to finish college. So he goes to the University of Texas, and he drops this course. And this professor tells him, do not study law. Oh, that devastated him. Because you're never going to make it. Oh, that just, this was the end of his life, because that was his dream. And everybody said it was never going to happen. So then he went to the military, because in those days they had to go to the army, came back, went to law school, and guess what? That guy that, whose mother didn't know English, who, who teacher said was never going to make it, didn't have any difficulty at all, even through law school. Why? Because he knew how to read, write, add, and subtract. His dream came true. He became a lawyer. His dream came true, he became a lawyer. Then, the one thing about, that he enjoyed about law is that you can help people. You saw the guys this morning, you know? 
You can help people. And he really enjoyed what he was doing. After a while, people saw fit to elect him to a local office. And then they even elected him to another office. And about, let's see, is this 1997? <coughs> let's see, about 17 years ago, this individual gets a call from the office of the President of the United States. And they asked this individual whether he would accept a certain position. And he said he would. And after that, the Senate of the United States confirmed him to this position. And every day, little Mexicanito, every day, not too far from here, in a very beautiful courtroom, every morning, they mount this way. And they say, Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The United States District Court and for the Southern District of Texas, holding session in Brownsville. The Honorable Limon B. Bella, Judge Presiding, is now open pursuant to adjournment. God save these United States and this Honorable Court. And they said he couldn't do it. And he said, himself he couldn't do it. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've been through. Don't you ever let anybody, I mean anybody, not your father, not your mother, not your teachers, not your friends, not your relatives, for God's sakes, not yourself. Don't you ever tell let anybody say it and tell you that you can't because you most certainly are an eagle. All of us are eagles. And there's living evidence all around us of people who had it rougher than you and I had it. That it can be done. You know, talking about that judge, whose mother didn't know English, and the teacher said we're never going to make it, and everything else because they would look at it, he earns $135,000 a year. You know what? That's not enough. You know why? He earns that because of the fact that Querer es poder. It's just that simple. And if you don't believe that, you tell them that Filemón, Bartolomé, Verda, Cárdenas, Cárdenas, and Jose told you so. Because you're Aguilas, and don't you ever forget that. <laughs>